Actually, I'm just realizing uh, it's the first time I'm being introduced in this uh, institute. <laughs> so, uh, so hello again. Uh, just the first, very first slide uh, to acknowledge the work because most of the things I'm going to show, if not all, uh, have been done by these uh, guys here. They are on the back, most of them, and these uh, our friends here who left the, the, the group. Um, just a word about the institute. This is uh, we are here. You already know that. Uh, but uh, the Institute of Basel of Montevideo is uh, part of the international worldwide uh, network of uh, institutes uh, which is uh, started uh, from uh, the Institute of Basel of Paris. Okay? <coughs> uh, and uh, well, one of the, one of the, the missions of the, our institute is uh, exactly the, 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 the following of this kind of organization uh, uh, and courses for, uh, for students. Uh, students from South America, but also uh, from from uh, all the world. So again, I would like to welcome you here, and uh, I will now go to uh, the the scientific presentation. Uh, what we are doing here, essentially, it's a, a new force field development. Uh, it's called Sira, and if you don't have heard about this, uh, don't worry, because it's, we are just starting to call it in this way. Uh, we have uh, published a few uh, scattered papers, say. Uh, but uh, we, and just in the next one, we are really go up with the with the with the name. Uh, some of you are laughing. Yes, it's Syrah. It becomes uh, it comes from from uh, the, the variety of grapes. Uh, the first historically uh, are recorded in the Babylonian chronicles. Uh, the, the etymology means uh, the, the medicine of the king. Uh, so and it was and it was the same word to, to say wine in in, in Babylonia at that time. Um, so. Hopefully there will be soon a paper published with the, with this name, so follow it. Uh, I will try to convince that all this uh, pompous list of, uh, of things is true. Uh, of course, I, I, this is uh, just a, a highlight uh, a presentation, but uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some of the details during my presentation on Saturday. Um, this is our logo, but it's also the, 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 the cornerstone of the party because it's the water market. And now most of the development we are doing is, is based on this. So the, 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 the idea is to, we wanted to make it easy to use, uh, so it's straightforward to use it in Robux or Ember. We can give you the parameter file and you just load it in as any of the courses. I mean, the Gromax list, you go, you have to be uh, A41 or whatever. Um, if you put the, the right uh, file in the right uh, directory, you will see also set up for field uh, to plug it and, and, and that's it. Then it, it runs directly under Robux. Uh, it has a relatively good speed up. This is for uh, implicit salvation with the uh, generalized world model, and this is for explicit salvation with this world model. And I will show you some, some features about bug mappability. Um, at the end, I will show you also some, some efforts in trying to do multi scale, and this is what's related with my last question to, to Max. Uh, Something important is that all the interactions are calculated within the same Hamiltonian than, than, than Gromax class. So if you're familiar, for instance, with Martini, Martini has a, a particular uh, kind of, uh, of interactions which are tabulated. We uh, always use the same, uh, the same Hamiltonian that Giovanni showed uh, in the last two days. <coughs> Good thing also is that we use long range electrostatics or so long range interactions, not uh, shifted Van der Waals or, or this kind of stuff. And by now we have proteins, DNA, water ions, and eventually we are going to go to lipids. Last thing here is that uh, we are kind of uh, proud to say that this is the first uh, initiative to my knowledge to, be, uh, to develop a force in, in South America. And so let me try to convince you about this. Uh, this is my methodology uh, slide. Um, most of the details about force learning are coming the next week, so I'm not going to that. But the idea is that uh, we are Picasso and Atomistics is uh, Velázquez. So um, we just try to capture the, the, the most important features that determine interactions. Uh, always remember that it, it's more or less easy to go from here to there, but then um, you will not be able to reconstruct this just looking at that. Okay? So this is an important point. Uh, when you go from here to here, there are a lot of details that are unavoidably lost. You cannot record. I will show you something about that mapping, but it's kind of cheating. Okay? So keep that in mind. Okay. Fine. 
So uh, I will show you first the, the kind of uh, historically uh, the first development was uh, a, DNA, a model for DNA. It is six bits per nucleotide. Uh, the, the, the size of the bit is, is here represented more or less in, in an accurate way. So this is the, the excluded radius um, <coughs> of the Van der Waals interactions. Uh, this is the connectivity. So you have a kind of uh, triangular uh, square, sort of saying. Um, and uh, again, thinking in Picasso's way, uh, what we wanted to, to, to keep was the distinctive features of DNA. And this is a phosphate chain. Uh, Watson Creek region for interactions and something which represents somehow the sugar uh, and and uh, yeah these two bits uh, that represent the sugar. Okay, so this is a typical uh, uh, AT and GC uh, pair. This is how it looks like uh, when you see it from uh, from a distance. You see that you can clearly recognize minor groups, minor groups. And nice thing is that you can use this same as atomistics. They uh, use implicit or uh, explicit salvation, as I said. And when it moves, this is how it looks. So it's pretty much DNA. Yeah. Is it like from RNA or something? No, but uh, I have some concerns about the RNA. Yes, well, actually, we tried. We tried a lot. And we had some problems with that. Yeah. Um, if you remember, uh, on Sunday, uh, Giovanni was showing a picture about DNA and, and the formation. Well, this is it's not the forming, it's keeping very nicely the, the B form, unless uh, you hit, and if you rise the temperature, it will eventually uh, melt, and you can study um, uh, melting curves, uh, playing with the sequence of the, le the length of the DNA filaments, and playing with the, the, the GC contents and so on, and you can fit. Uh, the, the, the curves. Um, so you can see that, for instance, if you increase the GC content, which is supposed to have 300 involves and supposed to contribute more to the, to the stability, uh, uh, you get a higher temperature uh, for um, for uh, the, the melting point. Uh, the data here is a bit uh, tricky, so I will not spend so much time on that. But something which is uh, we just uh, found interesting is that. Uh, if you follow the dynamics of DNA along several microseconds, um, then you start to see some interesting things. Um, well, this is the starting structure. Uh, the interpretation of this graph is the following. This is the time, and this is the sequence. Uh, when you see green, it means that the watson creek interactions are formed. So you have the, the hydrogen bonds, and uh, the, the B strand of the B form of DNA is formed and, uh, and perfectly now. Uh, when you see brown here, means that they are slightly separating. Don't care about that. Just go to the white strips here. Uh, it means that you really have some some large separation, which is usually associated with distortion. OK? So for instance, in this case, we observe spontaneous opening uh, of this region here, which is uh, very much analogous to the, the thing that uh, Giovanni was showing, but just forcing the, 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 the happen of this. Uh, we don't have to force it because the, the, the model is completely unbiased. Uh, it just happens uh, at, uh, at room temperatures. Uh, it will eventually close again, okay? Because the, 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 the bases have the, the possibility to explore the space, and eventually, when they they uh, they come close, they can recognize them, and they can form again the the, the, the form uh, and, and stabilize by uh, watson grid interactions. So, but the, the interesting thing is that the, the DNA explores some uh, curve conformations here, in particular this one here, which is associated. This is this one is taken at this point of the dynamics. You see there is a, a, a white uh, strip here, which is called bubble. Uh, and this is associated with the disruption, not in the extremities here and here, but in the middle of the DNA pion. OK? And if you see this, there is a kink structure there. Um, of course, the, the, the B-forest DNA is quite well characterized by, by X-ray. Uh, the opening and closing uh, of the, that you see in the brown uh, part is also very well characterized by um, um, spectroscopy and uh, NMR. So we are okay with the time scale here. And these big opening events have also been monitored by fluorescence quenching as well. Okay? So it's kind of uh, consistent with the, with the experiment and almost consistent with the time in this in this. Um, a part of the of the openings which are called bubbles. Uh, 
I just read this, which is a piece of, of uh, physical regulators published in 2003. Uh, the guys who discovered this uh, said at the end of the paper, the existence of these long liquid fluctuating bubbles adds a new and interesting dimension to the dynamical picture of DNA behavior and of DNA protein interactions. And we pretty much agree with that. And we started to think that if it is, if it is true that um, these bubbles spontaneously arise uh, at room temperature, uh, then it means that also it may be true that uh, the DNA is kink uh, during the formation of these bubbles. And if it is true, uh, we should also be able to find some confirmations in the PDB uh, database. You know what the PDB database is, right? Yeah, you, you all know. It's a place where uh, every time you, you determine a structure, uh, by using uh, experimental techniques, you deposit the coordinates there. Okay. So everyone who does a, a structure goes and, and writes the, the, the coordinates in the PDB. Uh, so it's kind of the bible of, uh, of the structures nowadays. So we want to check whether these conformations can be compared. I mean, just with uh, some of these conformations that you can find uh, mm, when you look at the DNA protein complex. Okay. So we just were looking for a the bending, so means the angle here, and comparing this with a lot of structures in the PDB. Actually, we did it with all the possible uh, protein DNA structures, thanks to a collaboration with uh, some Chilean guys and the group of uh, uh, Francisco Leno. And look what happens. Uh, red is the bending distribution that we obtained uh, using two, uh, um, 250 microseconds of simulation using different kind of, of DNA, I will not go into the details. And the green part is the distribution of, of uh, bending angles that you will find in the PDB using a non-redundant set of, uh, a complete but not redundant set of, of proteins. Uh, so it means really that, uh, or apparently, uh, that uh, the, the kind of fluctuations of DNA experience during the, 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 the simulation, or we will like say during the, 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 its life, uh, really have to do something with this which apparently could be related to the process of uh, binding because if this is true then uh, it may not be true that the protein has to really exert a, a work to bind the DNA. Uh, since these kind of things uh, well, uh, may last for several microseconds, if you remember the previous slide, means that the protein has enough time to really find a confirmation and go uh, very much like a rigid docking uh, having to pay, to pay much less price for, for the mining, okay? Which in a way makes sense because not all the, uh, not all the, the protein DNA binding events uh, have to be catalyzed in some way. So it really could say, could try to imply that in some cases at least, you really may have a, a kind of rigid protein Um All well, this I told you and we just published this paper in, in, in theory. Um, was doing um, generalized for model. Uh, just a word about the back mapping. Uh, one of the tricks we used is that we decided to do the mapping, so going from here to there, using the real position of the atom. So each of the bits here is placed in a position of the real atom. Okay? So this means that you can eventually go back using internal coordinates. Internal coordinates means that uh, I know which is the position between, which is the distance between this atom and this atom, and then I can also know which is the position between this atom and this atom. So I can reconstruct, for instance, this carbon here in between these two. Right? If I do it iteratively, then I can go uh, and try to reconstruct the, the positions of all the, um, all the, yeah. I was wondering how much mass each of them. How much? Okay, the mass of the bits is the same as um, um, the, the global mass of the bits is the same as the global mass of the nucleotide. So the, the mass is conserved, but, uh, conserved by per nucleotide. Actually, now uh, the mass, um, we, we try different redistributions of the masses, but now uh, the mass of each bit is 50 uh, atomic units. So, you can do this trick of, of uh, using internal coordinates for, uh, to go from here to there. Obviously, to go from here to there, to there, you just have to erase the atoms, right? So you, you don't need, it, it's not very much complicated, it's just to delete the, the, some, some lines in the part. You can do this. At a certain point, you need to do a minimization because uh, uh, it, it works very well for this part because it is a planner, right? 
but it doesn't work very well for the sugar, where we, ha we have a kind of underrepresentation. Uh, so we do a minimization, and then at the end we do a red mean square deviation fitting. If you do this, not any kind of simulation, just the, back, the, the mapping, back mapping, uh, sorry, and you take this for a, a thousand uh, structures from a molecular dynamic simulation, you get a root mean square deviation of one hour. Okay, which is more or less what, or, or even uh, lower than what you would expect uh, as a variation uh, in, uh, in a normal dynamic. Right? Excuse me. Uh, but the position is not so, so straight. Because this is um, the root mean square um, is a is a kind of global uh, global measurement. Okay, so you, you may be doing a very a very bad mistakes in some particular places, but at the, at the end the global stuff is more or less the same. So we want to compare uh, the energetics, which, which is much more uh, complicated, because if you have, uh, for instance, Van der Waals interactions and you go slightly closer, then the minus square or, or exponential or whatever you're using for the Van der Waals will rise very rapidly. And there is a price for the one who tells me uh, this is uh, coarse grain reconstructed, that this is uh, all atomistics. Which are the difference here? What's the price? An alpha core. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these two. This. You love it. Okay, and this is because we are uh, actually this is it's a problem related with the uh, with the terminal. Uh, we have we haven't worked that, that hard on the terminals because we actually not, are not that so much concerned about the terminal because this is a model conceived for big pieces of DNA. So we are kind of lazy and we decided just to let that let us it. But if you if you go to to check uh, the interactions. Uh, between the strands, or even between database, uh, between uh, base pairs uh, individually, then you will see that the, the energy that you can measure uh, is the same for the atomistically atomic reconstructed than for uh, the, the really atomistics. Okay, so this was uh, the RSO model, and at a certain point we decided uh, to go for water. And Yes, what for? Because there were already some 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 models uh, of water, in course, in water in the in the literature. Some of you asked uh, during the first lecture why to course in water if you're you you know that you're going to lose some hydrogen bonds and you're going to lose uh, many other properties. Well, uh, this was more or less the same question we asked. So what for? Um, but then we end with a model. Uh, which, uh, as I said at the beginning, we, we try always to fit the structure of properties, and we, we also try to fit the structure of properties of water, which is a bit more difficult. But if you do that, uh, I will show you some data. Uh, uh, it's it's interesting. So the model, the water model, is uh, something like this. Uh, water has a structure. It is a, it's called a, a structure liquid. It means that small cluster form and break in the picosecond uh, time scale. Okay. This is what you get from a normal simulation. Uh, these are uh, you can see this, 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 and this uh, are in, on the on the verses of a, of the tetrahedron, and there is one water here which is uh, depicted as a as a transparent, uh, which is coordinated with the other four. Okay, uh, and you see what th this is highlighted here with the with the square. And, and there are many of these tetrahedrons. They are not so regular, but they are there. And the important point here is that each water in the middle of each tetrahedron is uh, hydrogen bound. To any of the, of the other waters in the in the corner, right? So let me clean it a little bit. Now these are the position of the oxygens. Let me go back. You see? If you just keep the position of the oxygens, then this water here, which is semi-transparent, can be taken taken out because it's not doing anything outside of outside of an elementary cluster. Okay? So this is essentially the idea of what for. If you take then the geometry, which is um, known by neutron diffraction, then you you may have from this distance, which is uh, essentially by the room in front, by the um, uh, geofar uh, of water um, uh, using uh, neutron scattering, uh, then you have the, the, the uh, possible uh, geometry for an elementary character, which is coarse grain, by removing the, the central wall. Yeah, please. 
Yes, but remember that also the protein will be coarse grain. I will show you, I will show you something about that. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay, and the nice the nice thing here is that we are not constrained to one single bit. So we can use partial charges. Uh, if we use positive here and negative in the reds, then we can have a net charge which is zero, as it should be. But then you have partial charge distributions. Okay? And if you have something which behaves like a liquid, then you have good possibilities, or actually you're making it um, capable of, of generating a dielectric constant by itself. No, not a constant, sorry, a permittivity. Not the dielectric constant, as in many of the simulations. Okay? So it really generates its own permittivity. Right? Meaning that this water model, uh, water model is able to store uh, electric energy in itself, in the bath. Right? So it's, a, it's a really behaving as a dielectric medium. Uh, when you put this into water, so you put this in, in, in many in in in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of liquid, it will just behave as any water, just bigger one. Because actually, we, the only thing that we have done here is to increase the granularity of the medium. Uh, because also, water molecule is tetrahedron because you have two oxygens and two lone pairs, two lone pairs, lone pairs, right? So this is just a fatter water molecule in a way. If you put it in a liquid, it will behave as, in this case here, you can identify new tetrahedrons formed by these two. And it, it, that, that's why it works, because it's just, we are just increasing the granularity of the Okay? Uh, since we are trying to sell this as a force field, of course we also have a set of parameters for, uh, for uh, ions. Uh, in this case, we consider that the single ions are surrounded by a hydration shell, which in comparison six uh, water molecules in each, in each of these shells. So the ions are also hydrated. And if you put all together, uh, I will show more, more details on, on, on subject, but uh, essentially you get the coarse grain factor, I will not speak about this, but uh, it's uh, about 11 waters. You generate the permittivity, which is a bit high, yes, because it should be 78, but uh, it is. In the mean that you don't have to, to, uh, to, to import a constant uh, dielectric. Uh, and very nicely, we got good results uh, on the divide length, background uh, length, and also the osmotic pressure. So, um, uh, modulating the concentration, you can also reproduce the osmotic pressure of the solution, same way that you can do with the uh, The results are published, and you're going to get the 5%. Uh, let me go first to the bad news. This green here. Uh, is uh, the radial distribution function, which, if you look from the back, looks not so bad. I mean, it could look like a, like a water radial distribution function. Actually, if you compare it with uh, this uh, red and black, which comes from SPC and T3P, so the, the very popular uh, atomistic water model, uh, you see that we are missing the first peak here. But there's an obvious reason for that. The, the first peak is the water here. Right? So the first neighbor is not supposed to be there. The first peak of our water molecule is well, coincident with the second peak of salvation. And this is, in, it works in this way by, con by construction. Right? Then we have some problems associated then with the, because this peak actually is related with the position of this one. So you will always we have a second peak and the distribution, which is kind of spurious because of, of the connectivity of the water, but it's okay. Uh, we fit the, the parameters to make it uh, to have the right density at nearly 300 K. So uh, the water density, this is experimental, the open uh, squares fits perfectly at that point, but this is, uh, this is just by, by our uh, fitting. Uh, you can compare it with, with the results by, again, SPC and T3P. And if you go to check this, uh, the density against the temperature, also Giovanni said that the, uh, it's important not only to fit one point, because it, that's kind of an easy task, uh, which is important is to try to fit the behavior uh, uh, with, with the, uh, within a, a range of temperatures. Um, so we tried, we 
we try to fit a good to have a, a good behavior within this range because this is the range that will be most used for biological applications. So this is not a, a good water model if you want to explore uh, the properties of water uh, at the very cold temperatures. It will not work for that. It's not devised for that. But it's very good from 275 until 330. Uh, the relative error in the density goes. Uh, it, it, it's never go up. Um, it, it never go up uh, uh, up uh, um, three percent, uh, which is the same that you will get with any atomic model. And the very nice thing is that. Without doing any further fitting, if we went to check for uh, the diffusion coefficient, if you fit the right mass here, then this is red is what for. Uh, you, you recover a very nice fit to experimental values uh, and also to experimental uh, behavior against the temperature of, of the water. And this again are T three P and S C P. Of course, you cannot fit all the properties, and for instance, uh, any, any any model can fit uh, all the properties. So there are no, no single water model that can fit what all the water properties. Uh, for instance, what works uh, wrong is uh, the surface tension. This is very very small in our case, um, and we have also some problems with the compressibility, but they are not so huge. And of course, the reason is is that we are increasing the, the the granularity of the system, and you can compress it a little bit because you have a bit, a bit more uh, empty space in there. Uh, so what happens, you ask me, uh, I don't have a, a picture for proteins uh, going to your questions, but I do have a, a, a picture for, for DNA. This is a, a solvated system of DNA. Uh, yellow is for sodium, green is for, for potassium, and uh, orange is for chlorine. And the tetrahedrons here are, are in the fat water. And when you do a simulation, it looks like that, which is pretty much the same as any uh, any simulation. Um, but we, we start to see some interesting things. Look at these guys here. They are interacting interacting specifically with the with the minor group. And now I go. I, I will, Clean water and, and not you know, interesting ions make a rotation of the DNA and go to look again to what happens with the sodium. See this, this, this? They are all start to approach it to the minor group and localize it. Okay? So uh, there are just very mild indications of this behavior uh, by um, atomistic models, and the easiest thing to do is to blame the new model. And this is what we did at the beginning. But then when we discovered that uh, almost 15 years ago, the group of um, uh, Lauren Williams uh, have published a series of papers. In particular, uh, they have published uh, high resolution uh, structures for uh, for DNA uh, at a, um, a certain a different concentration so of sodium and potassium. And they, they have shown that the hydration within the minor group here as this structure is kind of fused hexagons here, and this, the, and these are the positions of solvation uh, layers. They, uh, they discover that and these positions can not only be occupied by water, but they can also be replaced by, uh, by ions. In particular, they, they could be um, very um, easy to be confused in the crystallography because the, the diffraction of the sodium and an oxygen is very, is very much the same. Okay, but they did a clever thing and they start to substitute with potassium. And you can see, and you can really uh, make a difference between potassium and, 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 and oxygen. And so they, they, they ended up with the idea that um, uh, potassium or sodium may uh, also be present within these sites, you can occupy the same sites as water. Uh, when we run the simulations, we were, we were uh, doing the, the, the same calculation for, for the densities, and what we found is that uh, we found uh, ions in these positions with, the, with the, the black dots. And of course, we are not occupying this shell here and the third, the, this is the, called the first shell and the third shell, and this is because our ions are already surveyed. So, uh, this, if an ion is, is in this position, is already using the space needed for this and this. Okay? So, we only have second and fourth solvation, uh, solvation shells occupied by ions, 
And this, the interesting thing is that if, if you put the ions there, then what you will observe is that there is a narrowing in the minor loop. And even more, to fit the narrowing in the, mi in the minor loop, if you count it, uh, during our simulation the number of ions bound to there, uh, we discover that only when you bind at least four or five or six ions within the minor loop, then you match the, the narrowing uh, in the minor group uh, reported by uh, by Greg Slaughter. So we started to believe uh, on these this kind of things. I will show you some more uh, interesting and, and biological applications on Saturday. Uh, and then... Uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, I, I have to move much more faster now. Um, Last thing is, is just uh, unpublished is a model for proteins. Uh, the idea is very rapidly that we keep more or less uh, atomic or, or nearly atomic resolution at this uh, at the backbone of the protein, and we change uh, the resolution at the side change using uh, um, um, an, an approximate uh, measure for that for this uh, for these vowels here, uh, which is related with the gyration radius. Of the functional group we were to reproduce. Um, this is how they look. Uh, all the amino acids. This is the size of the what for molecule. And again, going to the question, yes, this has to solvate these kind of things. But if you compare these guys with these guys, they are not so different. Okay. And you can. Uh, well, if you run a simulation, this is the kind of easy. This is a trimeric complex, this is a dimer here, and an amphibatic uh, peptide bounder. Water is all around but that. I'm not showing it just um, because of visual uh, clarity. Uh, see that there, is, there are no bounds here, so the peptide can eventually decide to go up. And each time it tries to go up, it finds uh, water outside and, decide, uh, and goes back to the hydrophobic interface. Okay? But it was kind of easy because they are all, all on a helices. It's easy to make helices. And then we tried with a, a non structure of the type. Uh, very rapidly, I, I, I will skip the details. But, um, it really goes to a non structure uh, situation. Explore a lot of confirmations. These are the solvation profiles, which are nicely hydrophilic for positively and negatively charged residues, hydrophobic for neutral. And if you compare it against some uh, experimental data for, for this peptide, the end-to-end -end distance measured by Fred and measured by our uh, simulation is more or less coincident. Uh, we can measure the helicity um, comparing against uh, CD data. Ours is slightly smaller, but we think it's, it's related with the degree of, of, uh, of course graining. The interesting thing is that if you do the same simulation, but just removing all the side chains, then the helicity goes to 5%. And if you do it the same with the polyalanine, which is supposed to be much more helical, uh, the, the, the percent of helical uh, content is, is much higher. Um, you can reproduce some, I will skip very rapidly this, you can reproduce some data uh, made by some common friends. Uh, during the simulation, the peptide goes to this confirmation, which is the one that we use for uh, as a starting configuration. Um, this is, this four conformance has been found using metal dynamics and the ember for for uh, domestics. And this conformation here corresponds to that. And what we see is that actually we are going, we are visiting a lot of other conformations, but we are going uh, in this part of the diagram with uh, with jumping times, which are coincident, at least in the order of magnitude, with um, with those uh, um, extrapolated from from metal dynamic simulation. Okay. Uh, perhaps to go from here to there, we will need more time, or perhaps we will never see them. I don't know. But this is uh, what we were for. Uh, how much do I have? I did over. I was warning you. Would be okay, fine. Uh, so, it works also for, for uh, protein DNA interactions. This is DNA against peptides. Uh, there will be some posters about this, so you will see the details there. These are polyalysin and polyarginine. 
and we are trying to investigate the, the way in which they interact uh, with, the, with each other and whether there is a specificity or not, very much the same way that, uh, that Giovanni did, but uh, in an unbiased way. And the idea would be to go to nucleosome simulation. This is a nucleosome particle simulated at the, at the quantum level with a very final idea of going to this. I mean, a uh, simulation of uh, of big chromatin pieces where also developing some oops. How many atoms are in there? How many of this? Yeah. Matia? Five million. Five million. <laughs> um, the idea is that we would like, we have no simulations, we have simulations of this. This is just model building, kind of same way of, uh, of uh, what Max was just telling us about. But using back mapping and anchor grain, you would be able to study protein protein interactions, DNA protein interactions, and so on uh, within the real context of the problem. We are not yet there. I mean, we can build the models, we have the, the tools to do simulations. We do not have the computer power to simulate this monster here yet, but uh, hopefully they will, we will get something like that. Uh, and since I am the local organizer, I will take more time. <laughs> no, just uh, we are also have a, a version of, uh, of hybrid CIRA, which goes for hybrid DNA. This is how it looks like. You can do simulations of uh, proteins of interest, the uh, regions of interest with protein and DNA and all the rest uh, at the, at the course, course and level, um, which of course will give you a, a speed up depending on, on the size of this and the size of this. This is a data binding protein. Uh, it works also for hybrid solvation. You can do it with water at the course level and at the final level with very few differences. We applied this for protein membrane systems. Uh, the, the blue part here is uh, the hybrid, the, the, the coarsening water, and the red part here is the hybrid water results of our parameter. And if you put this plus this together, what you get is this. So simulations of at, at, at two resolutions. Uh, I think in the future we will be seeing things like this plus with the things that the, the, the your stuff. I mean, it would be really nice to be able to, to combine a very, very different level. Uh, you can go also in the other direction because in, in, in our case, the differences in, um, in, uh, in, the, in the, for instance, long range interactions as electrostatics vanish very soon after the interface. So at this point, the, the atomistic uh, part does not realize that there is a, a core grain up there. So in principle, you could also put some QM, MM, CG within here. That will work. We haven't tried, actually. That's it. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking extra time. But, uh,